This video is sponsored by VIPSADKey.com. VIPSADKey.com is a marketplace website where you can purchase game keys and software keys with no hassle. VIPSADKey.com offers a legit Windows 10 key for only $22 and Windows 11 key for $32. This is the same keys I use on my PC builds. But to make it more awesome, they will be giving another 25% discount. Just type our coupon code XTNC. To get it for only $16 for Windows 10 key and $23 for Windows 11 key. You now have your legit Windows 10 or 11 key license all set but in a more affordable price. If you're in the Philippines, purchasing is very easy. You can use PayPal or Maya. Visit VIPSCDKey.com now. I'll put link in the video description below. So thank you VIPSCDKey.com for sponsoring this video. Hey, what's up guys? Action here. So here's another AMD entry-level AM5 gaming PC build around 50,000 pesos, but this time featuring the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7600 Gaming OC HG graphics card. So I'll be sharing with you its key features, talk about AMD's graphics technologies such as FSR, Radeon Super Resolution, and Smart Access Memory, as well as show you some gaming benchmarks so that may idea kayo about its performance when those features are enabled. Pero bago nyan, let's check out the parts that will be using for this video. Starting of course with the graphics card, featuring AMD's RDNA 3 architecture. The Radeon RX 7600 comes with 8GB of GDDR6 video memory and 128-bit bus. Features like Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR and the Radeon Super Resolution or RSR upscaling technologies, which when enabled would give you upscaled performance benefits across many games. In simple words, you can have higher image resolution and quality without sacrificing frame rates. So action, anong pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Good question. Si FSR kasi, it requires game integration, meaning that developers would specifically add it to their game for it to be supported. While yung RSR naman, on the other hand, is a driver-based solution included sa AMD software and will work with thousands of games running in exclusive full-screen mode with supported graphics hardware like AMD Radeon RX 5000 series and newer models. So to enable them for the FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, you'll find it in the settings of supported games. While si RSR naman or Radeon Super Resolution, you can enable it either with FSR enabled or pag walang FSR ang isang game through the AMD Adrenaline software. Just go to gaming and then enable RSR from there. You might need to adjust the game's resolution to lower one like 1080p or even 720p. And RSR will do its upscaling magic from there. And if you have a Ryzen processor, which we do, there's also the AMD Smart Access Memory feature, which when enabled would unlock higher performance across select games titles since the CPU will have immediate full access to the graphics memory for faster data transfer between them. So latency wouldn't be an issue. Madali lang ito enable. Just go to the BIOS, set new to advanced mode, then go to settings and then enable both the above 4G decoding and resize bar support options. Then save changes and exit. Meron din iba pang smart technology si AMD gaya ng smart access video which helps on video related encoding and decoding tasks. At marami pang iba which could be used if you have a Ryzen CPU and a Radeon GPU combo. Now, on the card itself, it features Gigabyte's WinForce cooling system which has 3 80mm alternate spinning fans with unique blades. 5 composite copper heat pipes that directly touches the GPU, as well as 3D active fan and screen cooling, which together helps to dissipate heat. May metal backplate then in order to protect the PCB as well as to provide additional rigidity. Display connectivity options, meron tayong dalawang HDMI 2.1a port as well as dalawang DisplayPort 1.4a. In terms of design, there's the monochrome color scheme with the colors mostly gray and black. There's also some touch of RGB on the Gigabyte logo which would be customized through Gigabyte's control center application where you can also customize and check GPU and system performance. And since it's the overclock edition, it comes pre-overclock then with a boost clock of up to 2755 MHz. The reference card only boosts up to 2655 MHz. So there's a 100 MHz additional boost. So for the other parts naman that we'll use, sa CPU we have the AMD Ryzen 5 7500F which I think it's currently the best entry level chip for AM5 gaming especially if you're building around a budget. May 6 cores ito and 12 threads. It supports the newest standards like PCIe 5.0 although this doesn't have integrated graphics due to it being in the F series. Cooling this CPU naman would be the included stock cooler. 
on the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B650M KUD, which is also one of the cheaper Gigabyte motherboards for the AM5 platform with B650 chipset. Here, you'll find most of the features newer motherboards have, like 2.5 gigabit LAN, USB-C with 10 gigabits per second, PCIe 4.0 M.2 connectors, DIY-friendly features like QFlash Plus, which lets you update the BIOS without the CPU, memory, and graphics card installed, as well as Easy Latch Quick Release for the PCIe Time 16 slot. For the memory, we'll be using the Kingston Fury Beast 32GB kit running at 5200MHz. And on the storage, we'll be using the T-Force Cardia Z44L 500GB Gen 4 NVMe SSD. On the power supply, the Cooler Master 550 80 Plus Bronze. And on the case, the Cooler Master Masterbox MB320L ARGB Mini Tower Case. That's it for the parts. Now it's time for some benchmarks. So here, we'll be testing the card's performance in 1080p natively as well as with features like ray tracing, FSR, and RSR upscaling enabled. So on native rendering at 1080p max settings available for each game at Apex Legends, we have an average of 205 FPS. While sa CS2 naman, we have an average of 180 FPS, which I think are enough for competitive playing for both games. And for some heavier AAA titles, here's Spider-Man Remastered having an average FPS of 127, while on Assassin's Creed Mirage, we got an average of 137 FPS. On Forza Horizon 5, at native TAA rendering without FSR enabled, we got an average FPS of 131. And turning on FSR would raise that average to 147 FPS. Now, here's some game tests with ray tracing and FSR. On Cyberpunk 2077, with only FSR enabled and set to auto, we've got an average of 109 FPS. Setting the FSR to performance mode instead give us additional FPS with 136 on average. If you turn on ray tracing without FSR being turned on, you'll get only a mere 22.5 FPS average. And turning it on at performance mode would boost it to a playable average FPS of 61. On F122 naman, at TAA rendering, without FSR or RT enabled, we get an average of 178 FPS. Turning on FSR would effectively raise the average FPS to 249. Turning on ray tracing with FSR off, we have an average of 63 FPS. And turning both ray tracing and FSR on, we got an average FPS of 140, which is very playable for this kind of game. Now, here's some tests as well with the RSR feature. On Starfield, which is probably one of the heaviest games to drive nowadays, we've only got an average around 50 FPS at 1080p native rendering without any upscaling. Setting the resolution to native 4K, we've only got an average of 24 FPS. And turning on FSR would give it an average of 51 FPS. And turning on both FSR and RSR at the same time would give it an average of 62 FPS, making it much smoother to play. You can even lower the in-game resolution to 720p when you turn on RSR in order to get more FPS. And in my opinion, in terms of image quality, there isn't really that much of a difference so far. So I think it's okay to do this in order to make the game more playable. Retesting CS2 on 4K native, we get an average of 53 FPS while enabling RSR, upscaling from 720p to 4K, we got an average FPS of around 170. And also retesting Apex Legends at 4K native, we've got around 89 FPS and enabling RSR upscaling from 720p to 4K, we got an average of around 260 FPS. In terms of cooling performance, the graphics card only reached a maximum temperature of 61 degrees during the entire game testing run. So I think the cooler is doing its job pretty well. So action, what's the best upscaling feature to use? In my opinion, if the game has FSR support, go for it since it's the more recommended option. And kung sa tingin nyo kulang pa, you can then also enable RSR at the same time. Although AMD says that you should disable RSR if the game has FSR support since it will be double the work and may even result to image quality degradation. They would offer the same effect lang din naman in most cases so pick only one if possible. In terms of image quality naman, when you turn on either FSR or RSR, it may degrade a bit in terms of sharpness. So you can also change the sharpen level with the FSR or RSR options, which would help to improve image quality when enabled.
I think this is the direction where most graphics card manufacturers are going with upscaling at the forefront instead of native rendering. So they're focusing on strengthening these features since most newer games are now very demanding in hardware requirements. The good thing here is that you can have lower tier graphics card and gaya nitong Radeon RX 7600 which supports these upscaling features, you can get more FPS at an upscaled resolution instead of trying to render it natively with low FPS. Now, kung plano mo mag-build ng gaming PC around more or less 50,000 pesos budget, you may want to consider this graphics card and use the upscaling technologies in order to be able to play at higher resolutions like 1440p or even at 4K. You just need to also have a monitor that supports those resolutions in order to do that. It's only a matter of time before features like upscaling become the norm. So at least ngayon pa lang, eh, alam na natin ano yung nagagawa nitong mga ito and their potential in the future.